destination sits on an eastern-facing bluff toward the Caribbean. It was one of the last cities built and inhabited by the Mayan people. Today, its beaches are filled with boutique hotels and trendy resorts. Bienvenido a Tulum. What language are you speaking? Swedish. 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 Yeah. How often do you come to Tulum? It's first, first time. First time. Yeah. First time. How Three long days? have you been here? Ten days. First time. Ten days. Yeah. I've been here for an hour. Oh. Exactly. You play golf? No. We play golf. Oh, you play golf. <laughs> yeah, and they had like a are golf, you a golf party. Fan? Yeah. Okay. Are you yeah. a famous golfer? Uh, I don't think so. Why do you think people come to Tulum? Because it's like hippie and luxury at the same time, it's so nice. Hippie and luxury yeah. at the same time. You've been here for eight days? Ten. Ten, Ten. days. Ten days. What's been the most fun so far? Yeah, big food. And the fire project, like staying at the beach, for sure. We did yoga this, uh, this morning. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yoga is great and all, but I mean, we came here for the golf. And as I'm discovering, the culture that surrounds it. There's a lot of cenotes on the golf courses. Okay. And one of them we found is like a, a ritual sacrifice place cool. where people would play this old sport together thousands of years ago and the winner would die. Wow. They would kill the winner <laughs> and then they would throw them in the cenote. Okay, nice. Anyway, that was on a golf course. So you can learn something from golf, it's possible. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good thing. After spending a few minutes here, I soon realized that Tulum is for the kids and that everyone here is making their own version of the golf show. Dinner is at Hardwood, an off-the-grid establishment serving fresh fish and quite possibly the best steak I'd ever had cooked over an open fire or any other flame for that matter. In 2010, Chef Eric Werner moved his family from New York City to the beaches of Tulum. With the help of the community and artists, Hartwood was born. And so we do a thing called Random Golf Club. A lot of times golfers will go play golf and they are programmed to not enjoy being paired up with somebody. Because they might disrupt their game. Exactly. <laughs> and so we try to go in and embrace that feeling of who on earth might I meet today that's going to change the course of my life. Like I've met people in singular rounds of golf that I've stayed in touch with. Evan is one of them. Evan and I got paired up, what I would say randomly, okay. and now we work together. You know, how do we know what the opportunity is going to present until not even when it's over, years later. You know, a lot of kids in Mexico, for example, don't have the opportunity to try golf because it's almost 100% private. And so one of the things we're hoping to do, like on Monday when we go to Mexico City, we're going to meet with some people to try to look at how we can make it more, um, you know, approachable. Making golf approachable and accessible has always been the mission for me, forever. But what makes golf exceptional? Time to call it a night because tomorrow I'm playing El Camaleon Golf Club at Mayacoba, one of the more exotic tour stops of the entire year. Viste que salitos de meten? Buenos días. Buenos días. Hi. How are you? Eric, nice David. to meet you. Hi, David. How are you? Huh? I'm so excited. Morning. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Welcome. Oh, it's so Welcome good to be to here. Coma, man. It's, it's unbelievable. It is, isn't it? It just feels like, uh, it feels like heaven a little bit. It is. Yeah. It is. Should we go play? Excellent. Yeah. Sure. You guys yeah. ready? Let's go. You want to warm up or you're good no. to go? No. Yeah, you're good to go. I don't need a warm up. I'm hot. Designed by Greg Norman, El Camaleon at Mayacoba is golf elevated. It opened in 2006 and has everything you'd expect from a PGA Tour level golf course. Today I'm playing with golf director David Menar and a famous caddy at the club, nicknamed El Toucan. How about that? Well, right. Good swing. It's so sad how when you hit a good shot, all of a sudden the world becomes like colorful and nice. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so you've been playing golf for how long? Uh, eight, eight years. Eight years. Seven for me. And so how often do you play at Mayakoba? Maybe every day. Every day? Of course every day. <laughs> every this is my boss. Yeah, yeah. No, no, only Monday. 
Only when <laughs> <laughs> loops and then, you know, play, play, play all day, man. It's good. ¿Qué es la historia de su nombre? Mira, de mi nickname. Sí, sí. Mira, lo que pasa es que en Veracruz, yo soy de Veracruz, y hay un lugar que se llama Los Portales, en Veracruz, y hay mucha gente, y se junta, y baila, mucha comida y todo, música y todo. Entonces ahí estaba la canción del Tucanazo de Moda, y le dije a un norteño que toca, entonces le dije, ¿sabes qué? Tócame la canción diez veces de Tucanazo. Ok, le pagué. Y una tras otra, tras otra, cuando iba por la quinta canción, mis amigos decían, ay, ya, otra, otra, otra. No, 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 toca esa, esa. Y bailaba y todo. Entonces ya, ahí se me, ahí me dijeron, no, hombre, te vamos a poner el tucán, el tucanazo, el tucanazo. Y ya al otro día, ya después, en la mañanita, todos ya todos desvelados, me levanto y chivo la canción del tucanazo. Y me dice, ay, ya, cállate, ya nos tienes harto con esa canción. Y ahí se, en la universidad nos empezamos a decir, oye, las historias, ¿no? Lo que nos pasó en la fiesta. Y me dijeron, no, pues él es el tucanazo. Entonces, le vamos a poner el tucán. Y ahí se me quedó el apodo del tucán. Y de ahí unos amigos que estudiaron conmigo vinieron aquí a Quintana Roo a trabajar. Y ellos hablaron el apodo y mucha gente lo escuchó. Y ahí se me volvió a quedar el tucanazo. <risa> aquí lo trajeron el apodo. Ah, interesante. Muy interesante. Sí, sí, sí. Vamos a buscando primero. Sí, la, okay. la tuya. La mía está aquí. Listo. 250. Todas. 250 y 250. 250 más 250. Driver, otra vez. Puede ser. ¿Cómo de se piso? dice en español? Driver off the deck. Driver de piso. Driver. <laughs> driver de piso. Sí. Necesito, ¿no? No, está muy bien. Ah, okay. tres. That's a board. Yeah, It's never good. saw it. It's okay? It's okay. Alive. Está viviendo. Es tu caddy por... Voy a hacer tu caddy ahora. Voy a hacer tu caddy ahora. <laughs> ¿Cuántas veces por una semana vas a caddy? Eh, a veces son de tres a cuatro días o tres, tres, a cuatro. tres días. Mucha la gente está, ¿cómo se dice? ¿Bien o...? Sí, la mayoría de cuenta. Aquí es un campo internacional y nacional. Entonces el 50% son mexicanos y el 50% oh. son extranjeros. Ah. Mm, ¿Mexicanos parte, de dónde son? De toda la parte del país de México. Sí. Sí, de sí. toda la parte. Muchos Entonces, vienen pero, a querer eh, jugar. Pero golf en México está, ¿cómo se dice? ¿Bien? ¿Mal? Sí, no, no sé. está muy bien. Está creciendo mucho. Yeah. El golf en México está creciendo mucho. Bueno, no en comparación de Estados Unidos, pero bueno. Sí está creciendo más de lo normal. Mucha gente pequeña, jóvenes y todo eso están entrando, incursionando en el golf. Sí. Antes mucha gente se le hacía un deporte para viejitos, sí. para gente adulta, sí. porque era un deporte pues, aburrido y ahorita ya lo ven muy interesante. Sí. Sí, la verdad a mí me encanta. 196. 196. No sé, el aire. ¿Cómo se dice esto? ¿Con quién? ¿Con, ¿Con el quién? aire en contra? Aire en contra. 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 Oh. <risa> perfecto, ¿no? Ya, yeah. perfecto. El tucán. El tucán. Ah, más. Thank you, Caddy. <laughs> Yo te lo tengo. No está, no está bien, necesitas... ¿Cómo Necesito se dice? Más... ¿Cómo se dice? Pa oh, lo siento. Necesito más escuela. <laughs> tucán. Dime. Uh, ¿Qué es su favorito uh, cosa? De golf. Sí, me gusta mucho pues, salir con mis amigos a jugar, eh, trabajar y, por ejemplo, trabajo con los señores. Me gusta mucho darles consejos del golf, cómo se paren, tranquilizarlos, decirles algunos consejos y después romperles la rutina. Si tú hiciste un mal hoyo, pues tratar de cotorrear para que se le olvide ese mal hoyo. Tú sabes que el 80% del golf es mental, ¿no? Sí. Y bueno, y me gusta eso y me siento mucho, muy satisfecho por decirles todo esto. Y aparte, bueno, trabajar. Después de trabajar, ir a comer y después juntarnos todos los amigos de aquí, del mismo trabajo y jugar. Yo puedo estar aquí desde las seis y media, cinco y media de la mañana hasta las 7, 8 de la noche. Sí. Sí, ya en mi casa mi mujer me dice, oye, ya llévate todas las cosas al campo. A tu, tu ropa y todo, ya vete a vivir al campo. <risa> Entonces, esto es su vida. Sí, aquí me encanta. Sí. Me encanta esto.
From its pristine tea boxes to its meticulously manicured fairways, El Chameleon is a true gem. Traveling the world playing golf, I thought I had seen it all. That was until I came across this. The Cenote Bunker. Right in the middle of the seventh fairway. hard for words to describe the experience of walking inside of a bunker and into the history of the culture that it sits on. So you're from Mexico City? I'm from Mexico City. And when did you come down here? I've been here for about nine years now. Nine years, yeah, okay. Yeah, so I grew up in the U.S. and then Where? from uh, Tampa. Okay. Tampa, and uh, got married with an American, beautiful American girl, and, uh, and now we're here, man. Oh, that's great. Yeah, living in paradise. How different is Playa del Carmen from Florida? No, it's, 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 it's different, man. You know, just from the vibe of the place, you know, this is a young place, it's a great atmosphere. It's kind of, you know, it's a fun, it's a fun place to be and it's a place with lots of history, man. I mean, uh, from Tulum to Cancun, you just, you find, you know, the amazing spots. The cenotes, man, that not a lot of people know about. These underneath caves that run for miles inside uh, Playa del Carmen. How long have you worked here at Mayacoba? So here I've been about nine years now. Okay. Yeah, so I, I was seven years running the, uh, the Jim McLean Golf School okay. that we have here in sight, and now almost two years uh, as golf director. How would you say now you have so much experience, especially with golf, where obviously uh, America, where right. golf is probably the most popular in the world, yeah. and now we're here at Playa del Carmen. Correct. How different is it here? Well, I mean, from Florida, for example, it's, it's very similar. The golf is pretty similar. You know, we got this, you know, some courses with Bermuda, we got Paspalum here, but the golf course, you know, it's windy, it's tough to play sometimes out here. And uh, it's quite similar, golf from Florida. But when it comes to the lifestyle, that's, you know, that's another completely different thing. You know, it, this uh, Playa del Carmen, Tulum, Cancun, it's, it's just a magical spot. The, the quality of the golf is maybe as good as America in some places, but as far as like the vibe of the golf, I've found it to be pretty different. Is that an experience that most tourists have when they come here? Golf in Mexico itself is not like it's in the US. You know, in Mexico, most places where you can play golf, except for Cabo, and the touristic areas like Playa, or you go to uh, Puerto Vallarta where you can pay green fees, but that's really the only three spots. The rest of the country, it's all, um, it's all private memberships. But well, a large majority yeah, are private. Yeah, 80%. It's, a, it's, wow. private, it's private golf. I guess like knowing that golf is so popular in the US and that most of the players here are from the US and Canada, how does that affect the game here or the culture of the game here? Everybody is, is, is getting really interested. I mean, the problem with golf is that people just didn't know about it. But once everybody kind of figures it out, they, they love it. Here in Mayacoba, we do every year uh, an event called Golf Para Todos. Okay, so it just means golf for everyone. So what we do is we open the doors on Sunday and everybody, anybody can come here. And there's a large gathering of people. A lot of teachers come out here and they teach everybody in town, people from town, uh, taxi drivers, their sons, you know, uh, everybody comes out here. People from the hotels that just never really, you know, paid any attention to golf. And, and it's an event that brings about 500 people on, on, on a day and it just it's food golf and there's uh, so it's getting people's attention uh, but it took a while but now it's it, it's there now mm. it's there I mean where do you even begin with the story of El Tucan I guess a good place to start is November of 2018 it was then that El Tucan caddied for the winner of the Mayakoba Golf Classic Matt Kuchar ¿Cuántas veces cuando está caminando en la 18, 18. verde está, está pensando como el domingo? El domingo, no, muchas, muchas. Desde que... ¿Sabes desde dónde, dónde está el pelota? ¿Dónde está sí. el pelota con Matt? 
and 18. Cuando estábamos, el tiro aquí. How big of a deal was the Toucan story after Kucher won this year? Side note, we shot this interview before the bigger story broke about Kucher and El Toucan. And luckily we can report that the two of them have since made up and moved on. Well, you know, it's the first Mexican to win the PGA Tournament. You know, it, it's crazy. But it's really, you think about it, it's true. Uh, Wait, what do you mean he's the first Mexican? Yeah, first the Mexican, you know, never a Mexican had even won a tournament or anything. And Tucan comes up and wins with Matt Kuchar a tournament, you know, so he wins a tour event. So you gotta say that Tucan is actually the first Mexican to win on the PGA Tournament. I like it. Uh, Exactamente aquí y había un divot atrás. One divot in the back. Okay. Y para hacer oh. un back era muy difícil. Sí. Lo reparó, pero era muy difícil. Pero que es este porque el pollo pasó. Exactamente por el pasto. So you know, Kucher was coming down. He needed a guy, and we thought right away from Tucan he carried for Checa last year. Alex Checa. Yeah, and he did a great job with Checa as well. So right away, the tournament director and myself, we decided, you know, the guy is Tucan. So, you know, he took that bag and, and well, the rest is history, man. And, and seeing it from outside and as a friend and, and seeing his story of success was a, a beautiful moment, man. I mean, honestly, and as, as being here and with all the staff and how the staff embraced that and how proud we were all of him. It was just, uh, it was a great moment. And, uh, and Tucan is a great guy and, you know, good things happen to good people. Man. Seis pies? Sí, más o menos. Seis pies. Oh. Entonces yo agarré, levanté la, la bandera. Oh, eh, entonces, pero esto es la bandera sí, de pero México. De entonces, México, ¿por qué no piso? No, porque no se puede poner aquí. Cuando jugamos en un torneo, en oh, la última es bandera de 18, bandera. Ah, es otra bandera. Sí. Pero aún así, en todos los días, en un torneo, en, un, en el hoyo 18, precisamente, no se pone en el piso. Ah, ok. Y más que es bandera de México. ¿Cómo? Mucha, mucha gente. Mucha gente. Demasiado aquí, gente. Todo aquí enfrente. Y estaba yo aquí, entonces toda la gente gritando, uh, uh, coach. Ah, yeah. <risa> y bueno, normalmente Matt, Matt andaba tirando unos spot muy buenos. Sí. De ese excelente potter. Cuando el pelota va en el hoyo, Ajá. ¿qué hiciste? Yo cuando entró la pelota al hoyo, lloré. Lloré. In inmediatamente. O sea, hice así, de la emoción. <risa> y, este, y bueno, ya puse mi bandera. Y regresé, abracé a Matt y todo, muy bien, sí. de felicidad. Y toda la gente, y el otro caddy del, de otro jugador, yeah. me dice, ve por tu bandera, es tuya. O sea, hay que quitarla de aquí y quitártela y hacerla. Entonces, ¿todavía tiene? Todavía, sí, yo la tengo en mi casa. The feeling that I got, and what I've heard from uh, tournament director Joe Masio, is that uh, Kuchar felt extremely relaxed during the whole week and Tucan really helped him in, uh, uh, to do that a long way. So, uh, he felt he was on a vacation the whole week and I think having Tucan on the back, just walking with him and, and, and I saw on the eighth hole for a moment there, Tucan really give him, you know, Matt some psychology lessons, man. I was kind of flipping out. I'm like, look, look at that Tucan. But how? Because oh, Kucha, telling, Kucha you know, doesn't speak Spanish, does he? Uh, no, but Tucan, you know, with his, with his English, you know, he's like, come on, man, we got this, you know, come on, man. I, and so he, he, he helped him, he helped him a lot. And I, I think the biggest job he did was really keeping him calm and relaxed and just, just come out here, enjoy it, have fun. And, and I mean, what was the drought? 1,200 days? Since Kuchar wow. had won, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and he gets on to can on the bag, and boom. Thank you so much. Gracias por su tiempo. No te preocupes. Yeah. Gracias a ti. Behind every masterpiece is an artist who has mastered their craft. The next morning at zero dark thirty, I went back to El Camellón to meet that man, Superintendent Logan Spurlock. This is your office. This is my office. Welcome. How many places in Mexico keep their course to this standard? In my humble opinion, none of them. But, you know, that's just because the way I, I operate and the way I, I think of our golf course. Um, I think we have a higher standard for ourselves here. I think all the other golf courses are great around here, but I think we, you know, we seek to try to take it to a different level. You know, right. We have to. When everybody comes to Playa, they want to come to El Camellón, so, and they right. expect the best. Logan's high standard is what makes El Camellón an incredible PGA Tour track. His attention to detail is matched by his love for the game. 
Even in my experience of walking around and noticing different courses and stuff, I mean, the entire experience here is obviously elevated, Yeah. but the course itself is unusually pristine. I didn't find any grass that wasn't green yeah. or growing at the right height and thickness. It takes a lot. I mean, I've got a staff of 32 guys. The majority of these guys have been here since day one, since right. 2006. So I've got a lot of continuity. These guys know what they're doing. They, they've been here forever. Are there any surprising difficulties that you found doing your job? The expectations are the same, you know, whether you're at a private club in the States or here. You know, once they see PGA attached to it, that's the expectation. Seven days a week, 365. Golf course is never closed. Whoa. Not Christmas, not New Year's Day, nothing. That's crazy. <laughs> the only day it's closed is when the tour is in town, and that makes it even harder. Yeah. <laughs> the, day, the one day you're closed is like the hardest right. day. Logan's true love on the golf course is his trusty dog, Romo. So you came from Sherwood where Romo was there. Yep. Yeah. And, and by the way, so you said Romo was an employee at Sherwood? He was an employee. Um, kind of how it all went down. We had a, if, if you've ever been to Sherwood, there's, there's a, a pretty good goose problem, coop sure. problem on some of those holes. Um, what do you do with that membership? I mean, that membership has high expectations. Well, with the membership, there's a dog that's a member there. Craig, yeah. Craig, uh, Craig, Craig T. Nelson's dog. Uh, has Nugget, which is his right. brother. Um, Wait, what? Yeah, it's his brother. It's his brother. You're, you're Nugget's brother? Wait, does Craig know this? Craig T knows it. He's, uh, they had fights on the driving range tee every morning. <laughs> no way. You uh, literally would have declined a I would job. have had to. I would have had to. What am I going to do, leave him here? Leave him back in the States? We're kind of a package deal. And I wouldn't have come here if I couldn't bring my dog with me. Romo got his start in the golf industry at Sherwood Country Club, just outside Los Angeles. During PGA Tour events, Romo is literally given an all-access credential. He doesn't chase birds, he doesn't play in the bunkers, and he never, ever walks on the greens. I love the way they flatten the middle of the bunker. Yeah. That's yeah. a thing, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, because it's not like round, it's, and, and, they, and they basically roughen it up, you know? Oh, yeah, I mean, the idea would be, you know, we don't touch the face here. The uh, superintendent I worked for up in Tahoe had the same idea of uh, why are we messing so much with the face of the bunker? You'll see some guys, they rake the bunker out, the face of it as well. It's, it, we, can, we can debate it all day long, but we don't like to. We like to keep it compact. Uh. So actually, when that ball hits it, it goes down to the bottom. So that's why we take care of the bottom. We don't touch the face daily. Every once in a while, about two, three times a week, we'll, we'll rough it up and, and clean it up a little bit. My guys just rake the bottom of it out. That's where I want your ball. I don't want your ball here. Because that's going to damage things. Nah, it's just, you don't you're, want to, you don't want your, yeah, you don't want to get in there. You know, the only thing you have to watch out for is kind of when you get that plugged lie. But if you maintain it correctly, you know, every once in a while you see that, you get that, uh, what is it, the uh, fried egg? Like, yeah, the fried egg, you know, Ugh. and you hate that, right? So when we get ready for like the PGA, which we're still kind of feeding off of now, is I actually have a vibrating plate, which, you know, just compacts the face of it. So oh. when that thing hits, it's like, you know, you don't want it to hit drywall, you want it to hit almost concrete and then work its way down here. Obviously, Logan is the black sheep among his crew of Mexican workers. It makes me wonder if there is a cultural divide between him and his crew. You know, I never really thought of because I've been working side by side with guys, you know, from Mexico my entire life. I mean, for the better part of it, for, since I was 16 years old, that, that's the way I learned Spanish. And I've been invited to the quinceañeras and the baptisms and the birthdays and the, you know, just the parties for so long that I just kind of, uh, it's such a natural feel for me. Logan met his wife here in Mexico and they have together a one-year-old daughter. Our daughter is dual citizen, you know. She's got a passport for, for the U.S. and Mexico. I don't look at it as any sort of, uh, she's a Mexican and I'm an American. It's just, she's my wife, I love her to death. It's funny, when I first met her family, and it was like, I walk in and her whole family showed up to meet me. You know, it was like 20 of them of aunts and uncles and brothers and sisters, and it was ridiculous. It was crazy, but gosh, it's just talking about, you know, really fitting in and welcoming, and, you know, my Spanish was okay, and it was just, you know, it's fun. It's, I highly recommend Mexican women for anybody. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> They're very loving people, you know? No. <laughs> no. It's just a, it's such an awesome place, man. Playa de Carmen. So I've been here for five or six years, so it's starting to feel a lot more like home. When I was in college doing internships, I did a U.S. Open in 2001 at Southern Hills. Just as an intern, you know, just cutting fairways at Southern Hills. When I, I grew up in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I felt it immediately, like, this is what I want to do. Not just take care of golf courses, but tournament. I've been fortunate, and I, I don't take it for granted 
it's humbling. I try to, you know, keep working hard and, and doing my job as best as I possibly can. But I know I'm fortunate. I know I'm, 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 I've worked hard to get where I am. You can call a little bit of it luck, but I feel like I worked hard. Golf's been very, very good to me. And, you know, you always want to be able to do whatever you love doing. I love being here. Can you imagine being anyplace else?